What's up, everybody? We got the sexy Monifa in the building. Hey, from Harlem Park. Harlem in the building. Right I'm from East Harlem, so mm-hmm. you know, same difference. No doubt, yeah. no doubt. Well, I wanted to ask you if you have a favorite female rapper. Favorite female rapper? Ah. Oh. Favorite female rapper. Favorite female rapper. Okay, hold on. Mm-hmm. So, they go like this. So, because the first, my first favorite female rapper was MC Light. Alright. Right? Okay, and, and after MC Light was Latifah and then Lil' Kim. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, right. in, that, in that order, like as far as, you know, age and, and growing up, you know, in, the, in, in my era, that's exactly how it went. happened to the female rapper. I mm-hmm. think it, it, it was it's a um it's all about the the complexion of the business, the, the industry and, and how with the world changing and how the society is and how we view things change. And so, you know, we had people that were felt more comfortable women that felt more comfortable taking a stance with their sexuality, with their strength in that way. And so then we you know with little Kim we we felt we saw somebody that wasn't afraid to be a sexual being and, and show that women are strong in that sense too. You know, nothing happened. I think she, lyrically she was she was powerful. You know, and and could you know hold her own against any you know anyone else, any you know, her male counterparts. And um, I don't think anything really happened to the female rapper until now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reason why I'm asking is because in like mid 2000, mm-hmm. all of the the major um, award shows it deleted that took right. out that category. Right, right, and, and I'm very aware of that. Um, I think in that sense. Uh, it, the, the, the whole the whole focusing on the sexuality might have hurt a lot of the artists um, not be taken as seriously as they could have been. I, I think that maybe one you know maybe one of the reasons and um, and just because uh, I don't know what else uh, there's something else because we talk my friends and I talk about this all the time like we you know we have how about comparison a little bit like between like Lauren Hill and Lil' Kim. Because also at the time you had they like... They have very big, very big differences. Polarities, actually. Yeah. It's a polarity between the two of them. So, um... But there's still, there's still no... Where's, where are the Lauren Hills? Right, right. And where where are the Lil' Kims? I mean, some would beg to differ that, you know, this this young lady, Nicki Minaj, is the new Lil' Kim, and I, I don't think so. You know, so, um... I just think that uh, it's um, something's missing, and the, 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 I don't something's missing. Something's missing in that arena that people are not believing it. People are not. It's not there, and there's no substance to it anymore. I, I you know, everybody, all the all the veterans have, you know, moved you moved away or on and are dealing with other things and you know dealing with life because that's what happens. And then there really aren't any real strong lyricists out there. I mean, really, on the whole front, there's not that many real powerful lyricists out anyway. So, you know, I think that... Uh, <laughs> well, I think that um, uh, there have been very str- a lot of strong women in this music industry, very, very strong women in the industry that we, for- we forget about. We forget about the Susan DePasses. We, we forget about the... Um, uh, oh my gosh, how could I forget her name? Sylvia Rohn, um, the Jean, um, I forgot her last name, she would kill me. But you know, there's a lot of powerful women in the business and that have been for years and eras, in, in each era. Um, so I don't think it's so much about, this is always a boys club, but I don't think it's so much about a power struggle between men and women. I just think that um, people are just doing what they need to do to survive and make it happen. And, it, and, and stuff is getting lost in the wash. Stuff is getting lost in that whole process. So there's a lot of uh, uh, substance getting lost in that. I'm very comfortable as a person. I'm comfortable, like, everything that people have seen of me, my videos, and nothing, there was nothing, uncom- that was all me. And very comfortable in my skin and, and who I am as a woman, as a sexual being, knowing that pussy runs the world. I mean, let's keep it real. I mean, really. I mean, most men do things for, you know, for a woman or, you know, to be to be looked upon as powerful for, for women, to, to gain access to, to the women that they fantasize about, that they envision 
are beautiful and believe, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I've never felt exploited, you know, uh, sometimes people, you know, you feel, you get disappointed and you feel betrayed in certain instances, but not exploited. I, I, I've, I've, um, even in my, uh, even in my youth and in my inexperience in the business, I, I've never felt exploited and, and wouldn't allow anybody to exploit me, knowingly. No doubt, no doubt. You know, a lot of wisdom comes, you know, a, you know, with wisdom, is, is time, you know, time and experience creates wisdom. So, um, there's things that I might do, might have looked done differently, but um, I don't. I never, I never felt like I got exploited or I let anybody exploit me, any man especially. Yeah. I'm dropping something. I'm dropping sweat this summer, and um, we're gonna take it from there. But, you know. Are there any, any? You don't have any guest appearances? Oh, oh, that, oh, that's yet to be. A that's label. to be announced. Okay. But I definitely do. I'm going to have some surprises on there. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So bad is something I desperately need to confess. I shouldn't have done it, but it was what I wanted. You're the best I've ever 